Hi there, Kent Beck from Gusto here. And I'm Kelly Sutton. And we're here to talk today about a piece that I wrote a while back called uh, Test Desiderata. Yeah. And the, the idea of the piece was to enumerate the good properties of uh, automated tests. Um, I think sometimes uh, engineers don't know what all tests can do for them. And uh, indeed, some of the properties are trade-offs. You can, you can be more thorough, but it's going to be slower if yep. you are. But also, sometimes people give up too soon mm -hmm. on a desirable property and end up leaving productivity on the table. Yeah, as soon I mean, it's it's really enticing to like as soon as there's like a little bit of friction, we just stop doing that thing that we know we should be doing. Oh, this one's hard to write, so I'm just I'm just gonna test this manual. Skip it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna start today by talking about uh, the basic property of tests which is that they test the behavior of the system that mm -hmm. we're working on. Mm -hmm. And we have an example here of some code that looks familiar for us, yep. uh, calculating uh, uh, minimum wage. And uh, why don't you show the, this example? Sure, so let's take, a, let's take a look at the code here. So um, as a payroll company, we need to calculate how much you should get paid. Yeah. Um, one of the ways of doing that is if you're an hourly worker, it's uh, how many hours did you work, and what's your hourly rate? Okay. Right. Um, hopefully not rocket science so it's, far. It's it's more complicated than this, or yeah. we wouldn't have jobs, right? Exactly. Okay. We would not be okay. recording okay. this video in this nice okay. building. Um, uh, so in the base case, in the normal case, it's just how many hours did you work, how much you earn per hour. Yeah. Right. Um, but every state, every city is a little bit different, uh, in that where you work also determines your minimum wage. Is it where you live or where you are employed? Uh, where you are employed, most of the time, there's probably a caveat to that oh, somewhere, I'm sure. That's why we're in business. Exactly. Okay, good enough. <laughs> um, so in this case, we're going to look at like a really, really simple, like like uh, really just simple slice of this problem, which is uh, what is uh, your hourly rate anywhere in the U.S., and then what would your hourly rate or what would your minimum wage be in San Francisco? Okay. All right. So we have a fifteen dollar minimum wage yep. right now in San Francisco. Um, so put it another way, you have to be paid at least fifteen dollars right. per hour. Right. Um, and so the test code on the right uh, tells us exactly this. So our our normal case anywhere else in the U.S., you work forty hours per week uh, at a rate of eight dollars an hour. That's three hundred and twenty dollars that you're taking home. Got it. Um, uh, now, if your zip code is in San Francisco, so we just used some random zip code yeah. uh, here in San Francisco. Is that your zip code? Uh, it happens to be my zip code, yes. Oh, okay. It's yeah. not mine. So. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I won't be able to track you down based on that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's good. a little bit of anonymity, anonymity, yep. anonymity there. All right. Um, so if my hourly rate is before 14 bucks an hour, we actually want to kind of see that get bumped up to 15. Got it. Right. Yeah. So that'd be 600 bucks for 40 hours a week, 40 hours of work. Uh, and then if the rate is above $15 an hour, uh, we just want to use that rate. Okay. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a flooring that's happening uh, uh, in the case of San Francisco. Got it. Got it. So the, these tests pass. Mm -hmm. Now, if we break the code on the left, mm -hmm. are we going to see the... Um, Okay, so there, there they are passing. Mm -hmm. uh, if we break the code on the left, mm -hmm. we're going to see them fail, right? Yep. So uh, let's say we fat fingered this, and we said, "Oh, 150." Yeah, or 100. Yeah, Obvious like, liberal political joke. I like the way that you're thinking. And so if we did that, uh, yeah, we're paying folks ten times as much in San Francisco. Yeah, even though they might deserve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah, and rent is not cheap. Uh, sure. Sure. <laughs> but, but, but wow, we're skating pretty, pretty close to that thin ice. Uh, so, so this demonstrates the property that we're talking about. Yeah. That the tests are sensitive to the behavior of the code. Mm -hmm. If we change the behavior of the code, mm -hmm. the results of the test change. Right. And if we don't change the behavior of the code, then the results of the test shouldn't change. But that's something we're going to get into uh, on future episodes because we have a list of 
10 or 12 of these properties, right? Yeah. yeah. So I wrote it. I should know how many there are, <laughs> but uh, I wrote it. I don't read it. Yeah. So, so there we go. So there's a first property that uh, of tests is that they should be sensitive to the behavior of the code that's being tested. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the next property, mm -hmm. which is that the test should be insensitive to the structure of the code. Yep. All right. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thanks for having me back, Kent. All righty. Bye-bye.